Welcome back to some more Thronefall. So, what I'm going to be showing today is a way to get all of the achievements at once for Nordfells. For achievement C, we're going to use the Light Spear, and then for D, E, and F, we just need to use the first three mutators. So we're just going to jump right into that. The perks that we're going to use are Arcane Towers, so that our towers are just better. Gladiator School, our units spawn in faster. Walls and Towers have more health. The tower that we are closest to is almost three times faster, and that range damage of buildings is increased. And our units, just range damage in general. So the primary difficulty from this is due to the fact that we have reduced drops of gold from other, or from the, just the typical enemies. So we need to deal with that fact. We need to get our economy up and running really well, really quickly. And the way we're going to do that is just with the fields. Get the field running out at first. We don't need a tower for the first wave, but now we're going to have fields just to get us better income for the next couple waves. The reason we go for down here is because now all the enemies are spawning up top. So it just helps to keep our economy away from where the danger is, for the time being at least. So we'll just get a tower, just to help, because 8 is a lot. And then a house, just to get some more income. And the fact that we have the tower shooting faster means that, well, honestly, one tower is more than enough. We probably wouldn't need to even contribute much to this fight, but it just goes faster. The next knight also has things spawning up here but the bulk of the forces are now down lower. Up here, these ones just chase me down, so it's safe again to invest in fields. And then we have two coins. It's We could get another house, so might as well get the economy flowing. We'll stand forward a bit to hope that the these people don't try and run straight through the field, or at the very least for the first one to do that. And then we're probably going to lose a lot of this field, but we'll do our best to keep it alive by attracting these people. And we lost one field, but we kept the other one alive, as well as the mill. So that's quite nice. And then rather than go for this other mill, we're going to prepare the next few waves by going for the upgrade to the tower just to help us do more for the next uh, general upgrade space, because now we have access to a lot more. Not necessarily much more income, although now we can level up the mills, but we'll be able to increase our defenses for next time. The two towers that we have should mostly be able to deal with the top and the right, although they're probably going to break the mill over time. So we could go over and help prevent that from happening. Because it's okay if the tower dies, although I don't think it will. It's sort of a, b a balance of if you want to lose something down here or up here. I'm sure you could go through it and not lose any of them, but it's not too bad even if you do lose one. So that's why we wanted to level up the castle center, is so that we can make sure that these runners don't just have a straight shot at our castle. They're going to have to get stuck there. They're going to have to, well, break through the wall. And we are now in a much better position due to the fact that we have a way to, well, prevent them from getting in. Because otherwise they just sort of steamroll right through. 
even with the spear making them go a bit slower, we just don't do enough damage unless we invest in a lot more towers than we have. And then because we got the wall, it's a relatively peaceful wave. They just sort of get stuck at the wall and then we just kill them up. Kill them off. And now we're going to have a lot of people spawn in here. So we're going to get the extra tower there. We're going to upgrade this windmill. Again, it's just out of the way a bit. Probably next wave things are coming from up here, but that's fine for now. And then, let's see, do we have a melee unit? We do have melee units. So if we have flail people, we're going to steal them for this wave. Just plop them right up front. Actually, we'll hold on to them at first to make sure that things get in range of the tower and that they don't get too ahead of themselves. Also, it's good to get units nice and early, because then that benefits, or takes benefit of the skill that we have to let people spawn in faster. We could probably have went for a different skill as well, but that's the one that we went for. I'm always a big fan of the one that makes nearby towers attack faster, though. So these people go for economic buildings, I believe? Yes. They try to destroy our economic buildings. We could have went for explosive fields to help prevent that, but we're getting the extra economy. Which, again, very helpful because we have the reduced economy due to the mutator that we picked. Which is why investing in these mills is extremely important. Although we realistically would be fine without them as well. And then I know it's outside, but it's just to help prevent them from running straight over to the other mills uh, when they end up destroying these, or if they end up destroying these, Maybe it'll give us some time to defend the other mills before they just go and destroy everything else. And there's nothing I can do except for try and take some hits, although they're not really going to attack me too much, only on the way to getting to the mills and the fields. So kind of expected, not much we could do there to help defend. What's this? A bunch of people down there, and then chase me, and then castle center. That's fine. So we're gonna make use, or even more use, of our people, because we have a perk that benefits them a bit. We'll get another exterior upgrade, and then we'll just go for it. No point in delaying. We'll actually come up here to help this tower destroy these guys. But we're sort of at the point, especially because we have so many units, that they can kind of handle everything themselves. We don't really need to worry too much. Like, even if they're starting to die, it's not a massive concern. They're not getting massively overrun. I mean, we can go check on them. They're fine. Even if they all go, we have our army of archers, and they don't even get through them all, so we're fine. Are these all flying? Economic buildings. Uh, economic is fine. 
there's nothing we can really do to prevent them from just getting to things, and that's okay. I mean, we're going for units, but we really don't tell them to move. We do tell them to hold position a lot, so we'll go for that, because that cannot hurt. Only makes them stronger. And we need everyone over here now. Just for the big people. There's not much that we can do to actually assist in the fight anywhere but down here. And our towers should be able to manage the actual economic little monsters. The little rats, the flying rats that like to try and get us. Not that we needed help, it's, again, once you get past the wave for the people that charge straight at your castle, so long as you have enough to get the wall for that level, everything's fairly smooth after that point. There's not too much to be concerned about at that point, or rather after that point. I mean, you could be concerned, but it's just not necessary. So much so that we're not even really... We don't even really need to worry about economy upgrades anymore. And we have two coins left over, so we might as well just put them down for another house. But it's not really something that we have to worry about. Also, that's probably one of the more well-defended spots. Let's try to prevent them from getting through to our income. And we'll just stand near this tower just to help it attack faster. So the fact that we have three, three upgraded towers down here means that this is only slightly better than us standing near this one tower. So we really don't need to worry about helping out down there. Not too big of a concern. Up top though. Apparently they're breaking through it. Do we mostly have archers up here? Maybe. And now all of the units are dead, so it's just we need to try and make sure that we can kill the the brutes, the tanks, whatever you want to call them. And it's, again, relatively straightforward. If we want, we could level up the walls to make them fancier. We might as well get this just to make it so that we have even more units, but it's not necessary. Two more knights. It's more so a question of just we could probably even just immediately start the night right as soon as we're done, but there's no harm in upgrading things a little bit extra to make sure that things go smoothly. This is also why the flails are nice, because we don't have any AoE damage ourselves. Or sometimes our spear can hit a couple people, but typically it's just one. I'm pretty sure when we're using our ability we can hit multiple. Maybe not, actually. So yeah, having the flails be able to hit everyone is very useful, helpful. 
And we'll just make it so these guys can attack an additional person. Because why not? This is sort of a, a gimme wave just before the final one. And then the final one isn't even that hard. It's just a bit of everything from everywhere, but mostly mostly the bottom, or the, the middle here. So having a few people sort of just claim off a little corner. And then we just put all the archers kind of allocated a bit of a mix. And yeah, that's really all you need to do. Like, at this point, we win. And yeah. So, in the middle, it sort of broke through up here. If you really are nervous about that, you can upgrade the walls. I just didn't feel like doing it. But it's enough to get the high score above 5,000, and it gets the rest. So, technically, this would be capable of doing all of the quests. So, yeah. Pretty easy for Nordfels. Alright, take care.